When it comes to his daily commute, billionaire Mike Cannon-Brooks likes to keep things low-key. When it comes to politics, the 38-year-old is anything but. He's now become a player in Australia's heated energy debate. How did your fair dinkum power movement come about? The Prime Minister, the Energy Minister, a whole a lot of people have been using that as a, as a slogan to try to, I think, simplify a, a very complicated issue. Um, but in doing so, I believe that they're not being fed in about what's actually causing those issues. We're going to stop the price gouging and have tough penalties for the big electricity companies if they try and do that. And thirdly, we're going to force them to put more fed income, reliable energy power into the system. Exasperated by the political debate, Cannon Brooks got fired up on Twitter. Australia could be a renewable energy superpower. We could be exporting massive amounts of power. We could have huge numbers of jobs here in this space. Cheers, guys. He's now launched a full-on pro-renewables campaign. So your office is this way? Uh, yeah. We're everything from trying to get people to uh, use the term in the, in the correct way, if you like, um, and then going through doing some economic modelling, putting out a series of, of policy changes we'd like to see in the upcoming election. Um, I think it will clearly be the number one or number two issue in the election. What do you say to people who say that this um, movement you've started is just, it's just platitudes, um, there's no sort of goal, there's no substance? Uh, the fact that we're, uh, we're getting people on TV and people are having this discussion and debate is great. Um, the fact that people are frustrated and trying to channel that energy in a positive direction is great. So this is HQ. This is where it all happens. Cannon Brooks is used to shaking things up. 16 years ago, he started at Lassian, which makes software to help co-workers collaborate. It's grown to a billion dollar behemoth. Now he has energy in his sights. What's the end goal? Uh, the long-term end goal is to move Australia to 200% renewable energy. Um, that would get us both a lower cost of power in the country and also a huge industry in terms of exporting power to the rest of the world. With a net worth of $7 billion, he's topped the Financial Review's Young Rich list for the past seven years. But Cadden Brooks reckons he's got a good feel for ordinary people. Do you mind me asking what your sure. own power bill is? Uh, sure, it's about $600 a month. I guess um, the question a lot of people are asking is, is what do you and, and indeed Atlassian have to gain from this Fair Dinkum Power initiative? Uh, from an Atlassian perspective, not, not much at all. <laughs> no real gain there that I can see. Um, from a personal perspective, um, I mean, selfishly, I think Australia can gain a lot from having a, a better economy and everything else. I've got four kids and everybody out there who has kids should be worried about this issue, not just from a climate change perspective, but from an economic perspective. Um, you know, personally, I have uh, uh, some investments in solar plants and solar farms. Um, I'm very bullish on that as a sector. Um, and you can see from the investment going in, that's, that's not, a, not a unique view. Um, bringing the price of power down, ironically, would actually hurt those investments, not help them. What would you say to Australians, um, say in coal mining towns like Singleton, who might take issue with uh, your calls to, to scrap coal? Sure, I think the government has to lean into, from a job creation point of view, um, it's, it's factual that solar and wind are generating far more jobs than the coal industry ever has. If you look at the singular example in Queensland, they just put out a stat. The current in progress and planned uh, solar and wind projects in Queensland are about 35,000 jobs in construction and a few thousand jobs in ongoing running of those plants. Adani, for example, was 1,500 odd jobs for the large scale coal mine, and now it's been scaled back heavily. We haven't seen a number since it's been scaled back. So the number of jobs created is, is large. The government needs to lean into that and see that and work out retraining programs and work out how can we get people. I understand that people are scared if their job's threatened, they get defensive, but there's many, many, many jobs being created that we need to, to lean into. While he's not afraid of a political scrap, he says he doesn't have plans to get into politics for now. <laughs> I'd be a terrible politician, I've said this a few times. Why's that? Look, I think that the part of the challenge of being a politician, in the, especially in the current environment, is personal views versus party views becomes a really complicated issue. I, I personally think I would struggle with that mightily. Um, and I've got a lot of things on the go at the moment, so I've, I've no, no desire to do that at the moment.